Today we're going to create a score variable and display it on screen during our game. So first we're going to create the variable in code. Let's go ahead and open up our game mode C++ file. We're going to start in the header file to declare what we're doing. Since we're going to want to access it outside of this class, it's going to be a public variable. And since we want to access it in blueprints later, we're going to make this a U property. This is going to be a blueprint read only variable because we don't want to change the value of it within blueprints. And this is going to be a float that we're going to call our score that we're going to initialize to zero. That's everything we need to do in the header file. Let's switch over to our C++ file. Now the approach we're going to take to this is we're going to have a fake score and a true score because we're going to be doing some rounding. So we're going to need to keep track of both of those because rounding frequently causes you to never actually increase your score. So what we're going to do here is create a new private float variable that we're going to call our true score. And we'll also set this to be equal to zero. Next, we're going to set up the tick function because for our little dinosaur game here, we want our score to basically just consistently count up as long as we are in the world and the game is active. So starting in our header file again, we're going to make a protected method here. This is going to be void tick and the tick function comes with a float called delta seconds. With that created, I'm going to hit Alt and Enter in order to create the definition in my C++ file. Now it's important whenever you're making the begin play or the tick function by hand that you remember to call super tick and pass in that delta seconds. This means that if we do have a parent class that we're calling and deriving from, we'll still use all of the parent methods. So this is a very important step. From there into our implementation, we are going to first take our true score and make it equal to itself plus our delta seconds times some multiplier that I'm just going to raw code as 100. The reason we're using delta seconds is because tick is going to run every single frame, but delta seconds makes something run independent of frame rate. So this means that no matter how fast the machine is, the scoring is going to be the same. Then from there, the score variable that we're actually going to output is going to be equal to an fmath function. And just in case you're coming into this tutorial out of order, at the top here, you're going to want to include the math slash unreal math utility dot h if you haven't already. Because that math utility is going to allow us to call fmath and a function off of that called round to int. And what are we going to round to our integer? We are going to round true score. And the reason we're rounding to an integer is so that it gets rid of any trailing decimal points. And there we go. We are good to save everything that we've just worked on and compile these changes with live coding. With a successful compile, we're now going to move into creating whatever is going to display that number on screen. And that is going to be done through a widget. So let's go to the root of our content browser and we're going to right click user interface widget blueprint and for this example we should be able to use the user widget with no issues and we're going to call this our scoreboard let's open up our scoreboard now to give the briefest of overviews on the left hand side we have a list of objects that we can add to our widget and then on the right side we have our details pane and then in the middle here is our actual view of what we're going to be seeing it's important to note that in the top right hand corner you can switch between the designer mode which is where you're designing what the ui looks like and the graph mode where you're going to do logic and stuff so back to designer mode, we are going to first do the most important thing, and that is to add the canvas to our widget. So you can take that, drag it over your scoreboard or whatever you named your widget, and then we've got our canvas panel. The canvas panel is going to keep things consistent across your UI. The canvas basically represents your screen's resolution. Then to display the actual variable, we're going to need a text component that I'm just going to drag and have attached to my canvas. Clicking onto my text component to bring up all of the variables related to it, we're going to have to check some boxes to get this to display properly for us. First, on the top right, we want to make sure we click this is variable button. This means that it can be variable. Next, we're going to set an anchor. The anchor we're going to choose is going to be the entire top bar. The reason for this is if we're working on screens that have different resolutions, the text box is always going to appear in the same spot. Whereas if we anchored to just the right hand corner, that would anchor to the right hand corner of the default resolution, which is I believe 1020 pixels. Then there's a bunch of other variables that you can mess with, but the only one I'm going to touch is I'm going to reset my offset right so that this expands fully. And then I'm going to justify my text to the right so that it displays on the right hand side. And just to make sure it does extend properly, I'm going to touch this to the final edge so that I know it's going to show in the top right corner. Now from there, we have to connect this text block to the variable that we created in our code. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna to go to the content of our text block and we're gonna click on this little bind dropdown to create a binding. This binding now represents the variable. We can see here that this return mode is going to be whatever we are going to have display as our text. So holding Alt, I'm going to sever the connection between these two and we are going to talk about how we're gonna go about this. 
yet text can be thought of as the starting point for this method. And what we need to do is we need to get a reference to our game mode and then get reference to that float that we made before. First, we're going to right click and get the blueprint method that we call get game mode. Doing so is going to get us that reference to a game mode that we need. Next, we're going to have to make sure that is our actual game mode that contains our score variable that we created. To do that, we're going to cast and we're going to cast to my dino run tutorial game mode. So this is going to make sure that the game mode that we have is equal to the game mode that we're expecting here. From there, assuming this succeeds, we are going to want to get our score variable as our tutorial game mode. To do that, I'm going to search for the score variable, and I'm going to make sure I spell that properly to get my score. Then from there, you'll notice that this is green, whereas this is pink. That is because this is a string or a text field, and this is a float or a number. We're going to need to convert or basically do another cast to make sure that this number can be a text. The way we do that is rather simple here because these are both variables. I can just drag and it's going to convert the float to text for me. And you can see that it adds the extra block that it needs there. Then just to make sure that everything runs through, I'm going to connect these so that it runs in sequence. So now we have set up a system so that the return or the text that we're going to display is equal to the score that is found in my dinosaur game mode. Let's compile and save that now. The next thing we need to do is we need to get our widget to actually display in the world. The way we're going to do that is we're going to close out of our widget blueprint and we are going to open up our game mode blueprint. Now there's going to be an event here called begin play and that is when we want to start displaying this blueprint. We're going to drag off of begin play and we're going to look for something called create new widget. So in this class here, we are going to choose the widget that we want to make and that is going to be our scoreboard widget. From there, we're going to go and we're going to add this to the viewport. The viewport is of course our screen. And what do we want to show here? Well, we want to show this scoreboard. So we're going to take our created scoreboard widget and plop it into our viewport. Let's compile and save that now. Now to show that this is working, I'm going to hit play and then we're going to see a score counting up in this top right hand corner. Now what you'll be noticing here is that I have these giant black bars which are outside of my traditional game space. You might have that issue too, depending on how you set up your camera. To quickly cover that, if you click on your camera here, depending on how your camera is set up, you might have the option enabled called Constrain Aspect Ratio enabled. Constraining the aspect ratio does exactly that, where if your computer's resolution does not necessarily match one-to-one -one with the resolution that you have specified in aspect ratio, it's going to put those black bars to fill in the extra gaps. You will notice that if I go here and hit standalone game or new editor window, the score will play properly in the top right hand corner. And then what you might have noticed there as well is if I go and hit play again, the score is not resetting. Why is that happening? Well, it's because we don't actually reset the score and the game mode seems to exist permanently throughout play sessions. So if we go back into our code real quick, what we're going to do in our codes begin play over here is we are going to go ahead and set both of our score and our true score to be equal to zero. If we save that and then compile, when I hit play this time, we'll see that we start over at zero, but that's expected off of a fresh compile. Let's close out of this and hit play again, and we can see that we start from zero once again. So there you go. Now you have a simple scoreboard, or more importantly, you know how to take a variable from your code and display it on screen. It's a pretty useful skill. Now in the next video, we're going to be finishing up this Dino Run series by creating a transition screen and being able to restart our game from that transition screen based off of a button press. So stay tuned for that. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you next time.